Good. Um, right. Thank you for inviting me to, to speak here today. Um, innovation. Um, we're all being asked to innovate. We're all being asked to improve equipment, make it better, more efficient, um, safer. Um, but someone's going to have to pay for it. Um, I don't quite know who that someone is at the moment because nobody's sticking their head up above the, the parapet. Um, so this is my, my sorry, this is the quadro view on the world. That's probably mine really. So why am I here? Okay, um, Quattro has been looking to innovate new forms of, of clean uh, propulsion. Uh, we've looked at many different ways. Um, we have to do something. Um, as one of the larger on-track plant suppliers to the industry, we need to be seen to be leading. And if we don't, no action taken is a it's totally unacceptable position for us all to be in. So we're doing something. <laughs> right. Right, first question. What is innovation? Any takers? No, nope, it's all first thing in the morning. Okay. Innovation, or something is not innovated until you've successfully taken it to market. Up until then, you've made something, you've invented something, you've done something, but if you can't sell it, it's not an innovation. And that's the clever bit we've all got to, to think about here. Anyone? Second question. Who is the father of innovation? Or who's given the presents? Okay, here we go. Thomas Edison is, is, is generally regarded as the father of innovation. <coughs> and 1870 is where they kind of call modern innovation began. Um, and what famously did he innovate? but not invent. Well done. He did not invent the light bulb. Somebody else did. He just made it better and took it to market. Okay. What have we been up to? Okay. Um, given the fact that across the group we've got 750 smoking diesel bits of kit, um, we thought we'd better do something. Um, <laughs> I joined Quattro in 2015 and sort of became a conversational piece between myself and the boss. And we started to formulate a five year plan. It was a back of a fag packet to start with, because it got better as we got on. Um, but yes, the, fir the first thing when I discovered the Supply Chain Sustainability School, which we've been a member of since 2013 um, and have done nothing since 2013. It's um, been part of that school. So we actually got involved, um, looked at sustainability and where we can take it, and um, that led us to looking at the Social Value Act, of all things, because now all government funders have the Social Value Act written in there, and it's all interlinked. So we decided this is going to become very important. We only opened a new depot uh, at Liverton in Newton Abbott in Devon in 2017, um, really good facilities, great track, brand spanking new. We converted an old set of farm buildings uh, into that. Uh, it's the area bounded by the white. As you can see, we've got a good 100 metres of twin track in there. Um, we've got built, a good set of buildings, workshop facilities, um, all there, lots of space to store, lots of kit. Because we were based in the southwest, uh, I started doing some investigation with the local universities. Um, I think the original thought was we'd just get involved with universities, do a bit of sponsorship, um, and I made contact with the University of Exeter back in 2018, went at my first visit down there in, in July, on, as it turned out, graduation day, and was absolutely blown away with the stuff that they could do there that I knew nothing about. <coughs> I managed to get the boss down there a couple of months later. Um, and from what was turned off to be a sponsorship um, arrangement, um, led to us having discussions with them about cleaner power. 
where we could take this, what could we do, and in that then led us in the next three years into a knowledge transfer partnership uh, with the University and Innovate UK, uh, based down in, in the West Country. Um, the, the original plan was to do hybrid technology. Um, we thought that was the way forward at the time. Uh, we failed, absolutely failed abysmally, because we went straight to battery. So we missed the hybrid bit out and managed to produce something that is um, actually fully electrically driven. <coughs> Um, we completed this year, Innovate UK, I think is brilliant, um, and uh, have assessed it as an outstanding partnership. Um, so it's good. In addition, in addition um, we've done a four-year sponsorship of an uh, engineering doctorate student down there. He's now in year two. He's busy looking at remote condition monitoring of our fleet. We think that there is a place to be able to um, pick up all lots of lots of uh, uh, reporting on our on our plant, and then someone to somehow he's going to design some form of we think artificial intelligence system that's actually going to uh, work its way through and tell us what we got wrong, and therefore we can change out the kit before it fails on site. <coughs> uh, we sponsor every year three MN students in their project uh, the project year. Um, and they, they study all sorts of, of, of subjects, uh, pick one by the university for using our facilities. Um, I think the most interesting one for me was the hydraulic efficiencies. <coughs> by just moving the pipes in different places in different locations around the machine, the efficiencies can be made to go up by almost 40%. It's a huge difference. And no one sort of looked at that when they built the machine. Uh, or if they did, they just decided to ignore it. I don't know, we haven't quite worked that one out yet. And the university uh, um, has a centre for future clean mobility, which we, we are very proud to be a core member of uh, as we look to take, 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 go forward into the future. So, so far. So we've produced two electrically powered on-track plant vehicles, uh, propelled by different forms of battery power. Uh, we have a Skyrail 160 new. Uh, John Deere Gator, and here they both are in our, our workshops. Um, the Gator is all nicely painted because it had made an appearance at the um, annual cart marking ceremony at London's Guildhall earlier this year. <coughs> um, we, we try to put something different in every year. Um, the different technologies, um, the Skyradar is powered by um, discarded um, lithium-ion Tesla batteries uh, that we've managed to acquire in our travels. Solar, maybe, um, and the, <laughs> and the Gator is, um, is 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 powered by lead acid uh, uh, gel, gel batteries. Um, that's not the way forward, but that's what we that's what we did and what we had available at the time. So we've done the we've done the invention, the manufacture, call it what you want. Now we need to innovate it. Uh, so we're going to run the movie too.
Okay. Um, sorry about a bit of a salesy. It's not, but that's the only movie I've got, and it's actually quite a good one. Um, that was a beautiful summer's day when we shot that, and we, we had on loan, um, you might have seen the, the solar panel kits uh, as, as it flew over. Um, and underneath that is a huge great battery bank um, that we've borrowed. Um, and that will lead us on to what we've now called the infrastructure challenge, uh, which I'm going to, uh, to go, go through in a minute. Um, we have tried to innovate before. Um, apart from supply and on-track part, we also supply uh, um, road sweepers. We have 50 of them in the fleet. Um, and we found a commercially built one, um, but they cost three times the amount of a traditional one. It broke down on the way to the trial with the client. Um, the battery failed. Um, we generally get 38 to 40 pounds an hour for a road sweeper, that includes the operator. Um, so return is, is long, to say the least. And obviously we, we, uh, we thought we should probably get about 120, 130 pounds an hour for this. We cut it to 100 to try and get some in interest. Um, and no, the client who works for HS2 um, and has a KPI to keep or to go as green as possible, said that was too much. So, just as an extra bit, we found some more funding with Innovate UK, and we're currently building our own. Two different versions, one where we're just gonna change and, and make the, the donkey engine that does the road sweeping um, battery operated, so it can drive it, it, um, and get there by normal diesel means, but once it gets to side works, it's on, on diesel, it's on electric, and then, the second one will be fully electric for use in, in, in urban areas, London especially, um, being uh, high demand. So that was the end of uh, 5YP1, and now we get on to 5YP2. Uh, what are we going to do next? So our gators are going through their seven year engineering acceptance cycle at the moment. So as they come out, still diesel, uh, we're going to uh, convert them to battery powered which then means that they don't require, it becomes an engineering change, um, which is a lot easier to achieve. However, I'm, 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 then we've got the dreaded product acceptance um, of network rail, so we, we wait to see what that looks like. Um, uh, but we're on that one. Um, we're looking to convert, uh, we've got a fleet of about 30, 400 kilogram basket, traditional MOOCs, uh, all quite new, and we're looking at I don't think we're going to do them all, not yet, but we're going to do, certainly do some because there is a market for it. And we're planning to do that ourselves. Uh, in addition, um, part of our, our, our larger um, program for sustainability uh, and the social value access talked about, um, we've now committed uh, to the science-based target initiative and are currently reviewing our scope three emissions. So this has been a we can measure scope one and scope two, which is the direct emissions that we, we do for our greenhouse gases, uh, trying to estimate how much greenhouse gases one purchased RRV is coming down, um, is, uh, which is our scope three emission inbound to us. Um, is a bit tricky, but we're on the case. Um, and we've committed to um, keeping to the, well, uh, now COP26 targets, as well as um, Paris thereof. And also, we're going to have a go now at doing a, a tracked excavator. Uh, we required a, an old PC128, very similar to the one in the machine, in, 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 in the picture, and we're now busy stripping that down, holding it open, seeing what we can fit inside instead of an engine. Um, we're not quite sure whether that can be done via pure electric or whether that will need to be some sort of a hybrid solution or another fuel. Um, we don't quite know yet, that's, that's, that's the new bit. Right. <coughs> Conversations with the university, they think that we could remove the hydraulics and do everything by electric actuators. Oh, now that is quite like that one, because that gets rid of the, 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 the hazards of, of having hydraulic oil all over the place. Um, so totally interested with that one. Um, we found, and I've not heard of this before, but um, we 
our road fleet in Scotland. Um, so our delivery trucks, road sweepers, and all the company cars have been fitted with a a polarizing magnet which fits around the fuel line. And I don't quite know what it does, so I'm gonna sit there and sit there and go with it. But it, it you can do it with wine as well at the port and stuff like that, but it actually brings up sort of like the magnetic flex lines, it straightens them all out. Um, and whatever that does, it puts all the, the dirt in the right place and the wrong place and doesn't go through the engine so much. Um, that's as highly technical as I intend to be today. Um, but apparently, we're looking at currently about 40% reduction in, in, no, in noxious gases at the moment, which is quite impressive for doing the site, which on the vehicles, I think, costs 50 quid. Um, and, and about a 30% in, um, improvement in fuel consumption. So um, we're now looking at whether we can roll that out across everything. Um, but that, that is quite new. Um, we've also managed to identify vehicles that have got buggered engines because the, the scores are right out the wrong way. And there's problem, problems with the engine management system. So actually, it's, it's got all sorts of good ideas coming out of it. But very new. We've been asked, and we have looked at, investigating alternative diesel um, supplies. Um, GTL is, is quite a favourite. Um, I think that of all the big RRB supplies in the country, only one has converted to GTL. The rest of us are all a bit nervous of it. Um, we think that with our older machines, it may well be make, make the banging too big. Um, so we're not sure at the moment. It also adds approximately 6 to 10 p to the price of, of a litre of, of diesel. <coughs> um, we are using HGO in sweeper dun donkey engines at the moment in London. Um, that seems to be working, but we can't fit it in the main engines. The, the, the manufacturers have said no. Um, and that adds 10 to 20 p per litre. So it it's, has good parts, it has bad parts. Right. Right, this is something that we've, we've called the infrastructure challenge. Um, and it's all about how are we going to do all this? Charge the machineries. What sort of infrastructure do we have? How much clean power is required? You can read this yourselves. And probably most important of all, who's going to provide the power? Um, we think this needs to be sorted out and properly. I think there needs to be standards set. set. We really don't need the Apple Android charging lead conundrums. We don't need a VHS beta for those of us that are older. Um, it just needs to be sorted. Um, I, I found some, after I'd written this presentation, I found some information at the weekend that the road industry estimate they're going to need 1.9 million charging points by 2030. <sighs> at a cost of 17.8 billion pounds. Currently, there's 27,200, which I thought was a bit low, but, and, and worse, even 10% of them don't work. Um, that's a hell of a, there's a, there's a challenge for both the road industry and the rail industry. Um, you know, <coughs> we think that our mute will last the shift. We think we can recharge it in a couple of hours. That's all to be put to the test, but that's what we think we can do. But if we've got a blockade, we're in there where we need multiple shifts, we've got to find a way of getting this recharged and recharged um, and quickly. So my clever my clever automotive engineer down in Lewiston has been drawing this up for me. Um, something we need to give a bit of thought of is how we're going to dispose of all these batteries. Um, and in fact, that probably interests my boss more than anything else. Um, you know, are, we, are we sitting there creating a rod for our own back in 50 years' time? Um, it's a question we, we, that does need looking at. Is that actually going? Is that so that's just his view, uh, and I, I take no acknowledgement for this whatsoever. It's a guy called David, who produced this for me. This is his view on what we need to do on site to be able to charge electric vehicles in the future. So we have started um, to identify and, and work on two major work streams, <coughs> both slightly different. Uh, we've called one Challenge 50, um, and this is to be able to charge 
machines that are up to 50 kilowatts. Um, this is the, the current limit of, of the hardware. Um, as he says, this is a very immature market. Hang on, picture there. Uh, that apparently is the Type 2 CCS socket. Um, that's as far as I can go with that one. This one's slightly different. This is actually getting the energy and how we can supply 200 kilowatt hours of, of clean energy to be able to charge multiple machines. So we have Challenge 50 and Challenge 200. Currently the best market. So we've, we've got to get this done for 2030. We think we must hit everyone else is hitting the target of 2030. We, we've got to be there. So we've got to get this challenge of getting that sort of power to, to, the, to the track side, energy to the track side by, by then. Um, it's, a big, it's a big ish. So uh, I'm coming to the end. I hope I'm doing all right on time. So we ha have committed to reducing its greenhouse gas emissions. We are doing that. Um, we're, we're busy on that at the moment. Um, Technology is, emitted, is, is evolving, uh, uh, really is rapidly. Um, the fact that we didn't have to go hybrid with our, our first machines is because the battery technology improved, I think, it three times in the two-year projects. So it's, it's on the move all the time. Um, it's some of the best fun I've had. Every time I go down to Liberton, I just get, I, I'm totally amazed at the stuff they're doing down there. And it's really, really impressive. Um, Big question though, there's some huge costs out there um, and uh, at the moment rates are being pressurised. I think, I think all of the suppliers will feel that, um, uh, yet we're still being asked to innovate. And I don't know that I should be around to see it, but there will be a five year plan number three in, in five years time. So there you go. That's, that's the end of my presentation. Happy to take any questions if you want. No, no, that's right.